All right, we're just transitioning now. Thanks for holding on, everyone. Take it away, Carter Freak. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, just give me one quick second so I can get this up for our commentator here. All right, awesome. Um, welcome to Fastest First. I am doing Metroid Dread for everybody today. We're doing the Any% Percent Unrestricted category. Uh, this category has seen some changes over the last little bit, so this is going to be a little bit hectic. I'm hoping I can do my best here. There's a couple crazy parts where I may die. If it happens, it happens. Um, anyways, I'm going to get ready to start here in three, two, one, and go. All right, so right off the bat, we are starting off with a bit of a load. Um, long story short, the typical thing with uh, Metroid games happens where Samus gets on this new planet, it loses all of her power-ups, and uh, you get to start exploring the planet. So uh, we're going to be starting off with about 30-ish missiles. We're going to be uh, using those to take out a boss in a little bit here. Um, we don't really have any movement abilities yet, so we're just going to be running around, uh, jumping the typical Metroid-style things. Um, we do have one new thing that we did not have in previous Metroid games, and that we have a slide. Uh, we're going to be using that to go under gaps like that where we would typically need Morph Ball because we're not going to be getting Morph Ball for quite a bit. So we're going to be talking with Adam here, our uh, little buddy. We won't be seeing him very much during this though. Um, one of the other new things that we have in Dread and he played uh, 3DS Samus Returns is we have a melee attack which can be used as a parry. That will be quite useful throughout the run. All right, so we're coming up to our first trick here. Normally you would have to go to a broken Emmy on the right side there, but you can shoot that blob through the wall. And we're gonna be doing that again right here. This one's a little bit harder, but thankfully got it pretty quickly. And that allows us to skip an Emmy chase scene and head directly to the first boss. So we're gonna be fighting Corpius here. And hopefully, that should be good. Okay, so because the boss did a spin attack and I phased them during their first phase, their head is actually locked in place right now. Now, normally their head's supposed to be moving around there, but because I got that, I was able to just keep shooting in one spot and get a very clean kill on Corpius and get the Phantom Cloak, which is going to allow us to go through uh, cloak doors or sensor doors. Uh, which we need to progress further into Arteria. So we're going to be jumping up here using a slide with the cloak to get through the door and then go and talk to Adam again. Because he's pretty lonely. We need to keep him company. <clears throat> now this upcoming section here, typically... There would be an Emmy, which is this game's, like, it's kind of the equivalent of uh, the SAX in Fusion. Um, this area typically would have an Emmy in it, but because of uh, some of the stuff we did earlier, that Emmy is not going to be here. So we can just kind of go through this area without too many issues. Just kind of smooth sailing through here. We're going to go up on the top part here because we can avoid a uh, map tutorial by going through the top there. There will be a couple other areas where I need to do some specific movement to avoid that uh, tutorial popping up again, but that's okay. And now we're going to try and take advantage of Phantom Cloak to make a jump here that you're not typically supposed to be able to make and skip draining the water below. Taking a little bit of extra damage I shouldn't be, but it's okay. Everything's fine. And again, the Emmy is still not in this area. Normally the Emmy would be here, but because of the things we did, we don't have the Emmy. We're going to skip draining, uh, or raising the water level there. Normally you would have to go through that tunnel up top there, but because we just did that jump, we don't have to. And we're making our way to our next power-up, which is going to be the charge beam. We're going to need that to open charge doors, like the one on my right there. So far, this has been a pretty good run. Um, so, now that we have our charge beam, we're going to make our way back here. This is the starting room that we, were, uh, we started the game in. 
and we're gonna take a bit of a shortcut through this charge door. I'm gonna grab this E tank for some safety. It'll just make the next area a little bit easier to manage. Now we gotta do a little bit of backtracking. Not too much. Because we needed that charge beam in order to open the door over here. Now we go through this big lava tunnel. It's like upside down lava guys are in the background, looks really cool. And we're gonna activate this tier, which will open the thermal doors. And that will allow us to head to the Emmy of this area, which is gonna give us our spider magnet. But not before one more conversation with Adam, because as we said, Adam's pretty lonely. We don't get to talk to him very much during this run. All right, so the Emmy is still not active. We're gonna be fixing that in just a moment here, so. We're gonna make our way down here, and because the Emmy's not active, I need to activate them. So I'm gonna go up here and run back into this door, which will trigger a cutscene, which will start this Emmy, blow up that blob so the Emmy can chase us, and then head to the central unit room. Did it? It just came back. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, everyone. Yeah, this stream kind of went down for a second there, but it looks like it's back up. Perhaps not. Yep. I'm not dropping frames. What the heck's going on? Okay, yeah, no problem. Okay, yeah, we just got a little bit of a, you know, technical issue. It's a marathon. Would be a marathon anywhere without some kind of little blip. I'm not sure myself if it's a graphic issue, Scott, or a, or a connection issue. Could could be anything. I don't really know myself, but they're on it. Don't worry about it. For now, I suppose I can read out a couple of donations that we've had in that uh, in the brief period we had with the, that frantic speed run. A lot happened in that seven minutes. We have ten dollars from uh, DVOXS. Alligators are the greatest monsters. You cannot defeat them. You know, there's actually some credence for that. They're, they're pretty OP. They've been around for a very, very long time, and they haven't changed a lot in all that time. They, you know, they've, they've kind of hit the peak of their own evolution, you know? Thank you for that uh, donation. And Anonymous has donated $10, simply saying, Good luck, Carter. P.S. Bonk. You know what we need to bring the stream back? A donation train. Firebird lover, I couldn't have said it better myself. What if a donation train magically fixed everything? I mean, it's worth a try. Crazier things have happened after all. <laughs> Don't forget, we would really love to hit that 15K by the end of today. Today is the final day of this marathon. And we have some really great incentives coming up. The biggest one is for that Skyrim playthrough. We are, well, last time I checked, we were halfway through that. Let me just refresh and see how we're doing on that right now. Okay, we are just shy of the two thirds mark of that Skyrim run. We are closing in on that, but don't let it go. We're so close to that. We have to hit that before it begins, of course. 
That run is going to be the number one and the number two runners of Skyrim in a head-to-head -head race. And, get this, they're going to play as Khajiit. Both of them. Khajiit have wares if you have donations. Wait, no, I can do better. Khajiit have speed runs if you have donations. Do you have donations? You can get a beastly, quite literally, speedrun. We have $10 from DVOXS, which simply says, please donate, y'all. Couldn't agree more. And Firebird Lover has given $5, saying, hopefully starting a $5 donation train to get the stream rolling again. Thank you so much, Firebird Lover. Yeah, a $5 donation train would be spectacular. It would be. Let, let me put it in perspective for you. Your donations of at least $5 to Trans Lifeline get you entered to win prizes offered by this community. You can use the command exclamation mark donate in the chat to make a donation. And you can also use the command exclamation mark prizes to see a full list of prizes available during the marathon. That's right, you're not just helping people. You also might get a little something something for yourself. What have you got to lose? Even a $5 donation, when combined with four other people donating $5 at the same time, you know, in a $5 donation train, that can have such a meaningful impact on someone's life. It really can. Today marks the beginning of Transgender Awareness Week. It runs from the 13th of November to the 19th of November. If you were not aware of that, you certainly are now. It is the beginning of Transgender Awareness Week. And then November the 20th marks the annual Transgender Day of Remembrance. We're really proud to be putting on this event as a kickoff to transgender issues that uh, facing trans transgender people and gender non-conforming people everywhere. Thank you for joining us and we encourage you to support Trans Lifeline and their life-saving work. Those are the commands, thank you. We have $35 from Scott Rahul who says, Sky, can we get your shirt with a big enough donation? I No, you, you can't get my shirt, uh, but you can get a sincere thank you. Thank you for that, Scott. And we're back. Sorry. Yeah, okay, we are ready to keep going, Carter. Sorry about that. Go ahead. It's all good. Um, so yeah, now that we're back, um, I just took out the central unit right before uh, things happened on stream. Uh, now we're heading to our first enemy kill. This enemy is going to give us Spider Magnet. So hopefully I don't mess this up, but we're going to try and plant right here and take the face plate off and slide under and then take out the enemy's face. And just like that, enemy is taken care of. So now Sam is going to absorb the Emmy's powers and we're going to get our spider magnet. Get right back into this. So now that we have that, uh, we now have the ability to leave Arteria. So we're going to use the Spider Magnet to lower that platform there and head towards our next area, which is going to be Cataris. So we go back through this area one last time and we're going to go all the way to the right this time. Now, I do have a bit of a damage boost coming up here. Hopefully, I get this, because I've been missing it a little bit lately. But uh, we're going to be using these little bats that are flying around here to skip having to ride a magnet across this room. Uh, unfortunately, missed it. I might still be able to recover it. 
if the enemies cooperate. Nope. Okay, I'm just gonna go back. So that's unfortunate. Um, haven't been having that much trouble in a while that I have to use this. But this is how you would do this normally, is you'd grab this and go across. I unfortunately messed up the setup here. That's okay. Alright, so yeah, now we're heading over to Cateris. Uh We have a bit of a load here, so if we have any donations, this will be the time for it. Let me just do a quick refresh here. Yep, we have $5 from NPC! Exclamation mark. The comment says, Choo Choo! Reference to the $5 donation train we're trying to kick off here. Thank you so much, NPC! Alrighty, so now we're heading into Keteris. Um This is kind of like the, um, the Norfair section of this game. And we're going to be talking to Adam one last time. And then we're going to say goodbye to Adam for the rest of the game. Because we're going to be avoiding Adam from here on out. Or Adam. So throughout the majority of uh, Cataris, we're going to be activating the uh, thermal fuel flow to open up these uh, thermal doors. Uh, we've got about, if I remember correctly, about four of them we have to open. So we can progress to the next area. And we have a heated room run coming up here as well. This isn't too hard, uh, especially with the extra tank that we picked up earlier. So hopefully no death. But it saves about three seconds if I don't mess up too much. It's a good thing we picked up the safety tank because I did mess up there, but we're good. We're just gonna kind of slide past the green enemy or green Emmy. Make our way through the enemy area. And activate this next thermal fuel flow. And then make our way back. Then we have to shoot this button here. This button's going to activate these uh, spider magnet walls that'll allow us to access the upper part of Cataris. We're going to preemptively open this door so that we won't have to worry about it later because that door takes a bit to open. And then we're going to look up here to activate the thermal vent, uh, vent door above me in advance so I don't have to wait for it later. And now we're coming up to our like first big skip, which is Adam Save Skip. Uh, Adam Save Skip allows us to skip every single Adam conversation from here on out. And we're going to do that by a series of precise jumps up here. Actually got it first try, very nice. That's actually a frame perfect jump, so I'm very glad I got that. Oh wow. But that saves about two minutes. Or a little less than two minutes. It's like a minute and a half or something like that. So it's a pretty big time save, and it also prevents Adam from ever talking to us again. We're gonna use a pseudo shot here to hit the button through the wall. And that's gonna activate the other spider magnet wall. And it's also going to lower the lava here, which we need so that we can get to Dairon. Because this is, uh, there's like one more spider magnet ceiling there I gotta pull down. 
or platform, whatever you want to call it. So now we just gotta make our way back there. And hopefully, uh, we don't get caught by this Emmy here if I do everything right. Hey, okay, nice. Uh, I messed up the movement there. That's okay. So I have a question for you. Yeah, sure, ask away. Do you run any other games? I run a lot of other games. I run every single Metroid game other than 3DS Samus Returns and the NES uh, one. I run, or used to run, Ukulele. I ran The Messenger. I ran Mega Man 11. I ran pretty much every Mario Kart. I play a lot of games. Quite a variety. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, I've been learning Donkey Kong Country 3 any percent. That's been fun. So you like your side-scrolling platformers by the sounds of it? Oh, yes, I do. Mm. I am a huge fan of anything Metroidvania. Hollow Knight? Haven't actually played it all the way through. I got started on it, and I, for some reason, lost interest in it. I don't know why. Oh, interesting. It's not a bad game. Just for some reason, I guess at the time, I just wasn't really feeling like playing a Metroidvania. It does happen. Yeah, it's happened to me. I've had to restart games. I had to do it with Breath of the Wild. Oh, that's one of those games that uh, feels like it would take a long time to restart, too. Yeah, I wasn't that far in. I was like two hours in and I hated it. And then I picked it up six months later and I loved it, so... I did uh, typical speedrunner things and I tried to beat the game quickly on my first playthrough and I ran right to the castle. That was not a good idea. <laughs> not, no, no, not on your first I, run, it's not. <laughs> I managed to get to the fourth boss in the castle and uh, at that point I'm like, yeah, I think I'll just go play the game. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed you got that far. <laughs> Time for a quick dono? Yeah, sure, go for it. We have $10 from a JD Puppy. Floppy ears are the best. You got this, Carter. Keep up the amazing gameplay. Thank you. And yes, floppy ears are the best. Eh, pretty good. That's pretty good. There's also a sub from Devio. Thank you very much. And 100 bits from JD. We have a hype train right now, guys. So this is a great time to drop your prime subs, ordinary subs, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, bits... All the proceeds from that go to Trans Lifeline. Donating straight up isn't the only way to support Trans Lifeline today. Okay, so uh, now that we've made our way through Dairon here, we're turning the power back on. This is going to uh, allow us to access the next area and get our next power up, which we're going to be getting the... Uh, the I mean, uh, or the, sorry, the Spazer, or... Is it the spacer? It's actually the wide beam. It'll it'll always be spacer in my heart. And that's going to allow us to open these uh, wide beam doors and push those wide beam blocks, which can be a big pain in the butt, because if you don't shoot them just right, they don't open, even when you're running straight at them. So we got another block here. And one more here. Thankfully, both of the blocks were nice. We have one more coming up, but that's in the next area. So yeah, now we're heading back to Cataris. Uh, we have the ability to head to the central unit room now, and that's where we're going to be getting our next power-up, which, uh, spoilers, it's Morph Ball. So about 20 minutes into the game, we're finally getting the ability to turn into a ball, which for most Metroid games, that's the first power-up you get. <laughs> This one, nope, you get it pretty late in. That's a good point. Yeah, usually, like, Super Metroid, you get it, like, right away. Um, most of the, like, most of the games, you honestly get it, like, it's your first power-up. Metroid Prime, which has nothing to do with Amazon, by the way, 
I'm pretty sure you get it fairly early in that too. Alright, so yeah, we're heading into the central unit room now. Uh, we're going to start this by shooting a wide beam immediately at the uh, central unit, doing a jump when these Rinkas are about to be fired, and hopefully not hit any of them, just to save a bit of time. And then spam wide beam at the sentry unit once it's exposed. And now we're going to go for a pretty silly kill on this uh, green enemy here. I probably shouldn't do this in a marathon, but, you know, sometimes you just got to live by the edge of your pants. All right, here we go. I am probably too close. Uh, we should be okay, maybe. I unfortunately wasn't able to get it. So if you do that just right, you can uh, you can land to the right of that Emmy, uh, shoot the bunch in the the faceplate, jump over it, shoot it a bit more in the faceplate to break it, and then just charge your uh, your final Omega Cannon shot and take it out right there. But it is extremely hard to do. <laughs> so I'll take that instead. It wasn't optimal kill, but that was still pretty good. Now we have the Morph Ball. This is going to allow us to enter Morph Ball Tunnels, a much desired feature in getting around. At this point, Samus has decided that she doesn't like hot rooms, so we're going to go get the various suit. Now, if we were running on an older version of the game, which is any version before 1.0.3, so 1.0, 1.0.1, 1.0.2, 1 they all had a, a glitch called Invincibility Glitch that you could activate off of Emmy doors. We are running on current patch, so we don't have access to that, so we have to go get the Various Suit. Uh, but the Legacy category could actually skip the Various Suit entirely, which is quite cool. Uh, it is actually possible to skip Various Suit in current patch now, too, but it requires setting up a trick that we're going to be using later in this run uh, on a different file in advance, which uh, is kind of... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what the ruling is on that yet, and it's also like 20 minutes of maintaining a trick that you cannot get back if you lose it, so it's pretty tricky to pull off. Alright, so now we're back in Arteria. We're going to be heading up here now that we have the Morph Ball. On our way to the Various Suit. And then we're going to activate this thermal fuel flow again, and that's going to make this place start getting very hot. So we need to book it out of here. So would you say this is your favorite game to run? Uh, I'd say it's one of them, yeah. It's definitely up there. The movement feels very good in this game. It just feels good to control Samus. That's essential in games. Sure is. If it's not fun to move around, then uh, where's the fun in that? Right. So now that we have the various suit, we're just kind of working our way back through this destroyed area that was just, uh, we were just in moments ago. And heading back to that same teleporter we came in from, just from above this time. Now, typically, at this point, uh, we would be going and fighting Kraid. Uh, we actually don't need to do that, uh, because we are never going to need Diffusion, as we are never going to be getting another power-up that would require it, which is the Gravity Suit. So we're going to be uh, skipping Kraid entirely. It saves about... I believe 20 seconds. The Kraid Pacifist run, let's go. Yeah, uh... Spoilers, we don't fight very many bosses with this run at this point. 
uh, this route this route changed a lot in the last uh, couple of months just because of like new discoveries, and it got pretty crazy. Yeah, we're just kind of making our way back through here. We're going to head back to Dairon. Let me know when's a good time for a couple of uh, donations. Yep, just uh, let me get to the elevator and it's all yours. All right. Or the tram, I guess. All right, you should be good. Okay, we have $25 from Sriraj. I hope I've said your name right. I'm sorry if I butchered it there for you. Uh, I just discovered this channel yesterday and I'm donating to help even one person. Putting this towards seeing King DDD later today. Thank you for that $25 dono. And we have $15 from Silwarium. Thank you again. I apologize if I said your name wrong as well. Uh, no comment, but thank you very much. Thank you everybody for the donations, by the way. You guys are supporting a really awesome cause, so keep at it. You guys are the best. Absolutely. All right, so now we're back in Dairon, and now that we have the various suit, we can make some more progress here. So we just gotta kinda do a little bit of backtracking, head to where the portal that, uh, you would go to from Kraid would be to get to a hot room. So normally you would come in through a portal on the left there, but because we're skipping Kraid, we have to make that bit of a detour. And we end up here in this hot room. This is actually the only reason that we need Varia Suit is this one room. If anyone can figure out a way of getting through this room without requiring the Varia Suit, community would very much appreciate that. So now we're entering the yellow Emmys area. Thankfully, we got a good pattern here, so I don't have to do any fancy movement shenanigans. We're going to do a single wall jump here to climb up this section without having to uh, go around the long way. And then we're going to go through this dark area here. So we need to activate the power again. so that we can get our next power up. Very convenient that this planet has all these places that Samus can just stick her arm cannon into. Activate things. Here we go. So we turn the power back on. And now we can go through this door here. And we now get the bombs. I noticed that about Horizon Zero Dawn as well. Lots of little sockets that are just perfect for Aloy's spear. Right? <laughs> it's very convenient how that happens in games. Mm, gotta love it. Now we gotta make our way to the next area. There's a, a small movement thing here. I need to not unmorph here so I don't activate that map tutorial that I was talking about earlier. Because if I slide into that tunnel, a map tutorial will start. So that's why I don't unmorph there. Even though you might think, hey, why don't you slide? That's why. Let's see if we can get in this tunnel. Nice. That movement's actually kind of hard for me to pull off, so I'm glad I got it. And now we're heading to the water area of the game, which is uh, Berenia. So again, if we have any donations, this is a great time for it. Let me just get another refresh in. I just did, but... Okay, nothing new now. But I can talk a little bit about our charity if we have time. By all means. All right, we are raising money for Trans Lifeline, as you guys probably know by now. 
Uh, it is a hotline uh, that is run by trans people for trans and questioning callers. The operators are located all over the United States and Canada and are all trans identified. If you are in crisis or just need someone to talk to, please visit translifeline.org slash hotline to learn how you can connect. All right, so now we're in the water area. We're gonna do some movement here to go through this water section. Some people might be familiar with the no major glitches version where uh, you might have the grapple, depending depending on the route you're doing, you might have grapple beam here and you pull that block. We don't have grapple beam right now, so we have to go around through the water. We're gonna do a slide there with Phantom Cloak to avoid the laser enemy shooting at us just long enough to get through. Oh, that's unfortunate. I unfortunately got caught there. That jump can be a bit of a pain in the butt, but it's okay. So now we're coming up to our next power-up, which is the uh, Flash Shift. Now, typically, you would have to go through a water section to get to it. It takes about eh, 30 seconds or so to get. We don't have time for that. So we're going to be instead entering the room from the wrong side which requires a series of bomb jumps which I am currently messing up that's unfortunate I haven't had trouble with that in a bit, but unfortunately I did there. I love how bomb jumps just keep coming back in Metroid runs. Now there's always a use for them somewhere. And now that we have the flash shift, uh, we're pretty much done in Berenia for the rest of the game, so we are not coming back here. Now, we don't have Diffusion, so we can't really do a faster strat in this section where you would shoot these blobs through the floor. So we're just going to be doing this normally. We will, however, be doing a bomb jump strat called a water bomb jump. So by placing a bomb like that in the water and then let me just do this part. This is a little tricky. Okay. So, um, by unmorphing after a bomb blow, uh, pushes you up in the water, you store a state that we call water bomb jump that allows you to gain height in the water with a bomb jump, which typically you're not allowed to do when you're off the ground. So that allows us to reach heights that we normally wouldn't be able to and uh, skip having to go like around to the left, up, and then back over to where that platform is. Saves a small amount of time. Now we made our way back to Dairon. And from here, we're going to be getting our next power-up, which is going to be the Speed Booster. And that yellow Emmy right there has it, so we need to go to the central unit of this area to get it. So we'll make quick work of this central unit. Now, this Emmy is really, really fast, but if you start shooting it right away, 
It doesn't even really get to move. So for anyone that had trouble in the, with this enemy in their playthrough, that's how you deal with it. You just start shooting it right away and it won't even be able to do anything. So now we're going to absorb that power up, get our speed booster. And at this point, we have now acquired two of the power ups that are going to form essentially a trifecta of power ups that are going to allow us to really break this game. We still have one more to get, which is coming up very, uh, very, very soon here. But this is where the this is where the game gets really fun, at least for me, because you start getting all your movement abilities. You have uh, your speed booster, which saves a lot of time. You have your flash shift, which is just fun to move around with. There's just lots of fun stuff going on at this point. So we did what was called a short bus, uh, short boost there. And that allowed us to... Uh, I missed that, unfortunately. So I need to get this uh, power bomb. Oh my god, please. No, stop it. There we go. Okay, so I need that. I'm going to need two of these. We can't use them yet, but I'm going to need it for later. Yeah, short boost. Um, short boost allows you to charge a uh, speed booster in a shorter space. It is uh, much more useful in no major glitches, as it allows us to access uh, screw attack very, very early with that. Uh, actually, at the same time that we're going to be getting it here. Uh, but before we get that, we're going to be heading to the Grapple Beam, which is our next power-up, and it completes our trifecta of power-ups that are going to allow us to absolutely demolish this game and just uh, kind of completely destroy the sequence of things that is typically supposed to happen. So for anyone that hasn't seen this before, you're in for a treat. So I'm going to try my best to explain this while I'm doing it. Um, first off, now that we have this, we have the ability to essentially clip through floors uh, and walls and a bunch of other stuff. Um, by using Flash Shift and... Uh, grapple in a very specific way we can do what's called a shine sink clip and that clip allows us to set up several other glitches of or one really important glitch called bombahe skew which we're about to set up right now hopefully that should be good so now i need to maintain this glitch which i actually didn't get it so i gotta set it up again in a different area which i will do in just a second I'll set it up over here. I don't think I got it there. Hold on. No. I need this to actually progress, so I need to get this right now. Okay, that should be good. Still no? Wow, okay. It's unfortunate that I missed it at my typical setup spot, but it's okay, we'll get it. Okay, now we have it. So, now we can make Samus do some interesting things. So we're just going to run through that cold room there. And we're going to shoot this blob through the wall. I can get the shot. Okay, and we're gonna do another water bomb jump so we can make it up to this ledge. And now fun stuff's gonna happen. So normally, Samus cannot face towards the screen or away from the screen or anything like that. But now we can do it on demand, which allows us to charge a speed booster facing the screen.
Set up another water bomb jump there. So we have this ledge. And now we have screw attack. Now I still have to maintain this uh, this state I'm in currently. And the only thing that'll cause me to lose this state is if I turn around in midair without being in spin. So it's very important I do not turn around without spin. Because I need to maintain this until I leave Arteria and then some. store there that's okay i love how people must watch these speed runs especially of uh i guess recent games that they've just beaten casually and they'll watch this and just go this took me 12 hours <laughs> i've had that experience a couple different times with some more modern games mm. so yeah that's you're always like man how do you how do you learn this stuff so quickly right yeah I mean, the 3D World run I, I just hosted before this, like, I played that earlier this year casually, and it took me hours upon hours upon hours. And we just watched pods do it in, like, less than two hours. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, 100% for that game is even crazier. I watched the 100% run of that, and it's just... I'm, I'm surprised that you can finish it that quickly. <laughs> even any yeah. percent, like, pods is... Like, I was watching pods' is run while I was practicing, and it's just, like... It's, it's so quickly... It's so quick in comparison to what you would expect it would be possible to do. Especially yeah. with the vectoring and stuff that you can pull off. Uh, Alright, so we're back in Cataris now. Um, we're going to be taking this portal... Uh, okay, don't lose the state. Um, we're going to be taking this hidden portal up here to access Gavaran. Now, typically this portal wouldn't be all that useful to us right now because you couldn't really progress here. But with the power of Bamahe Skew allowing us to face the screen or away from the screen on command, we can make a lot of use out of this portal. Also, if you have any donations, this is a great time. I will quickly refresh again. No, nothing new here. All right, awesome. Um, so I'll, I'll take the time to explain then. So we're going to be using this uh, Bamahe skew to basically get out of this like um, locked area. So I gotta make sure I don't lose it. This is very, very important I don't lose it now because if I do, I have to go back through that teleporter. So I'm, make, I'm making very, very sure that I don't accidentally turn around. Uh, we're going very, very safe. Especially for a marathon. All right, so now that I'm here, we're gonna run towards the camera a little bit and we're gonna speed boost out. And then we are going to do a Shine Sink here, if I can pull this off. Unfortunately, I missed it, but we can set it up again. And that'll allow us to fall through that floor. This is where there typically would be a boss, but because we sunk into that room, that room does not lock, and we can just kind of leave that room without fighting the boss. Unfortunately, I missed that. That's okay. Uh, I also just lost the state, but I'll get it back. Oh, no. Unfortunately, I messed up the crossbomb skip here. It's okay, though. We'll just do it again. Alright, got it. Second try. So I actually had to do that Shine Sink, because if I don't do that, uh, we never actually released the X Parasites, so that boss can't spawn, and when I kill the enemy that's in that room, 
the door to my right would be locked. So the only way to actually progress there is by sinking into the room and having the game think that the boss has already been killed. Now, uh, I will say, for anyone that has a spin emote, uh, get ready to start using it, because we're going to be doing a lot of spinning. And I mean a lot of spinning, because this is where we really break the game. So, once I get the state back here... Which I didn't get there, so I gotta try again. Nope. Having a little bit of trouble, apologies. Okay, so now that we have this, time to spin. So what we're doing here is, for every time we turn around, we're going to adjust the angle that our axis skew faces us by a very small amount. Now I need to do a frame-perfect turnaround in the middle of this turn here to face directly towards the screen after doing that. If I miss it, I gotta do spins again. So hopefully I won't miss these too many often, or too too many times, but uh, could happen. Hoping for the best. Okay, so I got it there. Now, we're going to run at the screen for a little bit. The fun, right? Yeah, very, very fun. So we're just going to run for a little bit longer. And we're going to stop, turn around, melee, and do grapple to go through the door. Because grapple prevents us from dying out of bounds. And we're through the door. Then we're going to grab this extra power bomb here because we need two extras. And then we're going to spin again. Two tries, that wasn't so bad. And we're just going to do a little bit more running. And right about now we can jump. That'll put us through the door. Which will put us through a cutscene. And we don't have wave beam yet, so... Uh, there's another door in our way. Which means we gotta do more spinning. But this one's a little harder than the other because we have to do some extra stuff. Okay, nice. We got the angle. So, I need to do... A jumping shine spark once I'm far enough into this wall to get into the next room. Because you can see there's a wave door below me. Um, this leads to a red Chozo fight. As it turns out, we, uh, we need to go in here. But we don't want to collect everything, so... I unfortunately missed it. I think I got turned around, too. Okay, never mind. We're good. Uh, we can try again. Every single one of these has a threat of death. If I don't, uh, if I don't do this just right, I will die. 
I have managed to not die during a sink so far, but this game is very, very strict about you being out of bounds. And uh, if you're too far into the wall, the game will just kill you. Okay, there we go. So we're through now. These enemies like... are so cool looking. Accidentally more reflect like that. Okay. So that's a little scary because this guy will basically one shot me. <laughs> but we made it through. Uh, if that guy had uh, hit me, I would have basically died and I would have had to do that entire. Um, <laughs> that entire going through the wall thing there again. The one leading to that boss, anyway. Just, just the one, not the other two before it. So now we have power bombs, which is the last power up that we need to finish the game. Now, for anyone that has played this game, uh, you would typically know that the next boss that would be coming up after you fight these like Chozos would be uh, Ravenbeak, the uh, big bad you run it, run into at the beginning of the game. Uh, we don't like him very much, so we're just not going to fight him at all. So we're going to be doing some magical stuff here in a moment. Just setting up for later. Refill our power bombs. And then we're going to enter the escape. As soon as I get the sync right. Hopefully I had to get this first try, because like I said, it's very easy to die doing these. Okay, nice. I didn't die. That's good. I can still die if I'm not careful, though. Okay. From out of bounds, did you say? Yeah. Uh, and then there's one last thing that can happen here that can kill me. I'm really hoping it doesn't. It's kind of... That's really bad. Uh, that was supposed to blow those up. Hopefully I get a drop now, because otherwise that could suck. Uh, Alright, so yeah, this boss here. This is after you killed Raven BD. You're supposed to fight this guy. And you're supposed to have the Hyper Beam. We don't have the Hyper Beam. So there is a chance this guy will just eat me. And I'm really hoping that doesn't happen, because it's kind of random. We don't really have a setup for it yet. I just have to hope he doesn't nom me. Which he did. So that'll put us back to <clears throat> right after we just killed the Red Emmy. Or not Red Emmy, Red, Red Chozo. So I have to do that part again. And unfortunately, it also causes things to lag a little bit now that uh, I've died like that. Give it six months, someone will find a fix for that. <laughs> okay, we're back in here again. I have to be very careful during this, because if I don't do that right, I will just die transitioning into this next screen. Okay, this time the power bomb worked the way it was supposed to. And we get another shot at this, so hopefully Craig Beak cooperates a little bit.
He is unfortunately not cooperating with me right now. <clears throat> so this is like, this is kind of the biggest roadblock with the run right now. Is this can just happen. And that right there shows just how easy it is to die when you're doing these uh, these sinks, as you can see. I died that time. It is not RNG how fast he approaches, actually, no. Uh, he approach approaches faster or slower based on if you're shooting him. Um, but the thing that's weird about that boss is that it doesn't really have a health bar. Um... It's checking for something else. I'm not really sure how it works entirely. Shooting faster doesn't really affect it. It's uh, entirely about the boss taking damage at a certain time at the end. And sometimes the boss just doesn't cooperate. And I'm having a bit of trouble with the sink here too. I apologize. <clears throat> you got this. The difficult trick. I think yeah. everyone knows that. <laughs> I was really hoping that Ravenbeak wouldn't nom me when I got there as fast as I did, but it is what it is. I require power bombs. Please give me power bombs. Thank you. All right, third time's the charm, right? Yeah, chat's got you back. Okay, there we go. Nice. Third time was the jump. We're not out of the woods yet, because now we have to do that same uh, Bamahe skew stuff, but during the escape. Because, as I mentioned, we do not have Hyper Beam. Um, and there's a certain part at the end that requires Hyper Beam, normally. One of the nice side effects of doing this uh, kind of glitchy setup, though, is that you end up getting um, flash shift, which you typically don't get during escape. All right, so I have to set up Bamahe again here. Try that again. Get a short boost. Okay, so I have Bamahe set up. And again, we're just going to be very, very careful to not lose it. All right, now we have one last section we got to do some spins for because, like I said, we don't have the hyper beam. I unfortunately actually didn't get Bamahe, so I have to reload the last checkpoint. I thought I had it, but I did not. I messed up the setup.
Yeah, I do have it this time. I just have to make sure. We gotta do a little bit of spinning. And we're gonna run at this door for a little bit. Let me tell you, this right here is the most terrifying thing, like after you get past Stravenbeak. Um, because if you. Don't get this. You just die during this game. Like, this part's super intense during a run where you're on a good pace. That's gonna run a little bit further. Run killer is what they call these. And then we nice. just kind of phase through that door. And that is time. GG! Great run! Thank you very much. I really appreciate everybody having me here. And uh, like, like I said, everyone that's been taking part in the marathon, uh, runners, donators, people just watching, sharing, everything like that, you guys are doing something really awesome. You're contributing towards an awesome cause. And yeah, I, I can't say thank you enough. Uh, while we're sitting here watching somebody that we never ran into the entire time we were doing this run uh, get absorbed by Samus, I uh, just also want to quickly shout out the uh, Metroid Dread speedrun Discord. Um, this game is super awesome. There's lots of different categories that you can play that are, you know, you don't like glitches, there's glitchless. You like having a little bit of glitch, a little bit of spice in your life. There's no major glitches, which is a really fun run. Uh, there's actually a tournament going on for it right now on Speed Gaming being hosted by uh, Kekum and Shoyu. Highly, highly recommend uh, taking a look at that because the qualifiers, I believe, are going on today or the last set of qualifiers before the tournament starts. So definitely check that out. And yeah, I think that's about everything I got to say here. So, whoops. All right. Thank you. Well